Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to generate wind loads according to the ASC7's main wind force resisting system for open structures. In this particular video, we will be focusing on creating the wind load definitions for the open roof structure when wind is acting on the structure in the positive global z-axis direction. Now before we create the wind load definition for the open structure, we will first take a look at how RAM elements will calculate the design wind pressures acting along the roof system. RAM elements will calculate the design wind pressures using the ASC 716 and it is capable of calculating these pressures for a variety of different roof type systems which you'll be able to specify through the wind load definition. We will now turn our attention back to our sample model in RAM elements where we're preparing to generate the wind loads for wind acting on our open structure in the positive Z global axis direction. To start this process, we will select the home tab of the ribbon toolbar and then click on the wind load definition dialog. Now for wind acting on the structure in the positive Z global axis direction for a pitched roof, this basically means that wind is acting normal to the ridge of this particular roof system. Taking a look in the code, that would require me to generate two separate wind definitions for this particular load case, one for the windward roof and one for the leeward roof. So let's go ahead and get started. So here I'm gonna start by entering my general parameters, including the basic wind speed, the gust factor, and the enclosure category. I'm gonna make sure for the enclosure category that I'm selecting open in the pull down menu. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and enter the dimensions of my structure here. I'm gonna go ahead and enter 31 and 68 for the dimensions and then also the mean roof height ground level, and in addition to that, my topographic factor. Next, let's go ahead and proceed on here where I'm gonna select the roof system. Now, the particular load case we're gonna focus on right now is for load case A. Now, if I wanted to ensure that all scenarios were covered, which I will do for my final model, I'll go ahead and look at case A and case B in two separate load cases. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and enter the wind direction. Now, this particular load definition I'm working on represents the windward load definition when wind is acting normal to the ridge. For the windward surface, I'm gonna enter a wind direction of zero degrees. I'm gonna enter the flow type, the free roof type, and the pressure direction. We're gonna enter windward. We can enter the area and the distance from windward edge. Let's go ahead and click on the new icon and we'll go ahead and name this definition. I'm gonna call this Z open roof case A because I will eventually have a case B and we'll call it windward. Now before we leave this dialog, let's also generate the pressures for the leeward side of the roof. For that, we're gonna change our wind direction to 180 degrees. Tell the program we're working on the leeward face of the roof. Everything else is staying the same. So let's go ahead and click on the new icon and name this definition. Now at this point, for this particular case, we have finished our process. So let's go ahead and click close. Now after you create your wind load definitions, you're ready to then go ahead and assign it to the load areas within your model. Now as a reminder, load areas are used as a mechanism to distribute uniform pressure to supporting frame members. They don't add any additional weight or stiffness to your model. They're just used to transfer a uniform pressure load. Now, to start this process, let's go ahead and select the load case that we're working on right now. Here I'm gonna select WLZ1. This will be wind load acting in the positive Z 
direction for case A. Then I'm going to go in the data area, select the areas tab, followed by the surface load icon. Now everything in RAM elements works on a select and apply rule. You're going to select the elements or items that you want to assign something to and then proceed with your assignment. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to select one area in each bay on the windward side of the roof system when wind is acting in the positive Z direction. Now for this particular model, I did go ahead and assign descriptions to different areas within the roof. So if I click on the by description icon, it'll select everything else on that side of the roof system. Once I do that, let's go to the spreadsheet tab in the ribbon toolbar, and we're gonna assign our wind pressure. Within this dialog, we're gonna go ahead and select the wind pressure that we are planning on assigning. We're going with Z, we're looking at the open roof for the windward face. Within this dialog, we're able to see all of the input parameters that are available. And if we wanted to preview the report and see some of the calculations, we can go ahead and click on that icon. Now, some of the roof areas may require the program to understand what the pitch of the roof is. And as you recall, we didn't enter that information into the definition. To determine the pitch of the roof, the calculations will be performed when they're assigned to the area and the geometry of the area will be considered when looking up those types of variables. Let's go ahead and close out of that report and we can click OK and we can see the uniform pressures have been assigned to the windward face of the open roof. Let's go ahead and unselect those areas. Again, we can hold down our shift key and select the areas on the other side or the leeward face of the roof. Again, we're going to assign our wind pressure and select the appropriate definition. When you're satisfied, go ahead and click OK, and we'll be able to see that roof pressure has been assigned. Now, if you would like some additional information about which load definitions were assigned, we can go to the Areas tab in the Data Panel and click on the Wind Load Definition icon. This is a great place for you to go and just double check to see which load definitions you assigned to your model. Now, if anything changes, if you want to delete any wind pressures, for example, you can tell the program you want to delete your wind pressures. And if anything changes within your wind definition, you would need to reassign it using the same process we just showed you in order to make sure all of the parameters are updated. Last thing I want to discuss is that each load area can have one load definition assigned per load case. So if you want to select a different load area or a different wind definition, you just need to reassign it and it'll overwrite anything you had previously assigned. Now one last thing, if you would like to see that load area distributed to the supporting members, you can click on this distribute load areas to tributary members icon and you'll be able to see the arrows and the values associated with those as they're distributed to the supporting roof members. Now at this point, this concludes our process for generating and assigning wind loads to the roof system of our open roof structure for wind acting on the structure in the positive Z global axis direction. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.